really practice yellow jambala. If you did not remind me, I would forget. And it's very cold outside. Uh, when it's very cold outside, sitting here, you could feel very drowsy. So I've forgotten everything. Actually, for spiritual cultivators, it's a good thing that we can reach a state where we can forget everything, really. Uh, uh, people who uh, people who praise you, you forgot. People who undermine you, you forgot. So to be seated here, because everything is forgotten, the brain is emptied. So the head would be lowered. So in practicing the yellow jambala, the, in the correspondence office, everyone knows someone wrote a letter from Taiwan to thank, to offer gratitude because they won a lottery. the Jupiter Foundation office if please raise your hand if you saw this letter nobody just me no, but Master Lian Chuan so you were the one who gave me the letter that this is won a lottery. That's the letter that it appeared to the dead about chanting the Hiking Sutra. Don't you remember the letter about winning a lottery? Oh, I heard it. But that was from Malaysia. No, I'm talking about the one from Taiwan. Someone showed me a letter about winning lottery. And tomorrow at the ceremony at the Rainbow Temple, I thought, because time is tight, so I pasted this letter in my book. And both of them did not know, only I knew, so 
I should have won the lottery. And the last sentence is, thank you for telling us winning the lottery and resolve their financial problem. So there are three places then who won lottery, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Singapore. In Singapore, it's called Toto, right? In, strangely, how come not in America? Right, when we went to Ta Ili Zhang Temple, the Singaporean saw the, the residence number of the temple. And all the people from Singapore buy those numbers, and they all won. The other day, we went to the Ilizang Temple to perform the Tara the Destroyer ceremony, and everybody saw the Ta'i Lezang temple built in the Tibetan style. It's so beautiful, very big. And they copied the address number. They all won in the total lottery in Singapore. Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, they all won. So really many into the school. In America, there were two. One is Lianhua So Mai. The first one who won lottery for 55 million was Lianhua So Mai. And he accepted the interview by the news, the, the news. And he practiced the world deity practice, which is the instant wealth by Golden Mother. He was the one, the first one, who won the lottery. And that was the first prize in America. The second winner was, or the second time, the winner won 160 million US dollars. But if I win like that, I will not sit on the Dharma throne to give Dharma teaching anymore, and I would have forgotten everything by the time I get home. Jambala is also a wealth deity. Actually, all the four heavenly kings are wealth deities, and I chanted their names earlier. Uh, Virudaka, Drasarastra, Virupaksa, and Vaishravana. And Jambala belongs to the Vaishravana in Tibet. All Tibetans highly revere yellow Jambala, Vaishravana. I hope during blessings later, see people won prizes in Singapore, in Taiwan, 
and Malaysia. And we should also have people win in America. There is a benefit to win lotteries. You can help other people. Once you have this gifted wealth, more or less, you should give them away and perform charity because you have the cost of winning a lottery, you have the condition to give and altogether that's causes and conditions. In the Saha world, everything is causes and condition, cause and effect. So the causes and its consequences or retributions. That's how it is in the Saha world. Let's now share a joke. Why after marriage you don't give me any gifts anymore? The wife asked the husband. The husband replied, Have you ever seen anyone feeding baits to the fish that's been caught? And then the wife beat the husband to death, I mean really badly. And the daughter said, Dad, such a bad luck. You fish a crocodile. In Chinese, it's like an evil fish. Now we'll get to the main subject. A question from Taiwan. <laughs> she knew I was sleeping today. This name sounds like I would like to ask hmm? Grandmaster in 
the article, the 36th article in the Thousand Dharma Vessels for Two Deliverance, you mentioned that death is divided into three stages on the verge of dying, intermediate state, and reincarnation. For all these three stages, most people would have someone on their deathbed, deathbed, such as family and friends who know about guiding the consciousness, chanting, and helping the dying. But if one dies alone without anyone performing any of this guiding during dying moments, chanting and during the verge of dying, one cannot visualize the attainment in seven days or the swiftest way to be reborn. One don't, doesn't have any attainment from chanting and hasn't been able to move the chi to open the apex. How would one know if one has died already? And how to know to save oneself using the power of chanting and practicing that we normally do? This question is contradictory. That you can be in control of your conscience to save yourself using the power of chanting and practicing that we normally do. If you can save yourself using the power of your chanting and practice, then you don't need other people to save yourself because you can save yourself already. And the verge of dying the intermediate state and the incarnation, the moment of the incarnation. First, spiritual cultivators should rely on themselves from their spiritual cultivation. And relying on other people is not reliable. For example, those died from COVID-19 recently. How can they have anyone by, them, by their sides? They just put in a bag and donate it. So at such time, nobody next to them on the verge of dying at the moment of the intermediate state or the moment of reincarnation. And you're cremated just like that. Right? So many people died from COVID-19 in this pandemic. They can't have their family close by. So how could there be anyone helping you chanting? To just die like that. And she had the question, how do you know if you died already? Since you don't know, then how would I know? How would anybody know? At that time, when they talk to the living people, the living people can't hear it. The dying person would think of their loved ones, generally. And the custom in Taiwan, that they would come back on the seventh day, is that right? 
That's what they said in Taiwan. When they come back on the seventh day, place some light sand in the living room and they would leave some marks. And we would know that they have died. But when they come back and they speak to you, and when you talk to the living people and they don't respond, then you know that you're dead because nobody could hear you. Nobody can see you. So during birth deliverance, some, a kind of animal often appears. Very strange. Their souls would attach to a kind of animal or insect that would uh, walk back and forth on the offering table. Like Simu's brother, when I performed birthday deliverance at the Gansai Ridge, at that time I lived at the Gansai Ridge, and I was performing Bardu Diligence for Simu's brother. On the offering table, a cricket appeared. A yellow cricket. And walking around. Have you ever seen a cricket in Seattle? Oh. Uh -oh. A cricket appeared in Seattle. That's very strange. I lived in Seattle for close to 40 years then and have never seen a cricket. But the cricket walk around and when I settled my mind and took a look, that was uh, her brother's soul attaching to the cricket. One time at the Taiwan Lizang Temple, I also performed the Bardo Deliverance Ceremony, and the birds flew into the main hall and made the circle, circles several times. Everybody looked at the birds and then they flew away. And I think it's at the Seattle Lezang Temple. The butterflies flew in. Birds, also birds. They flew in. So they would attach to these animals. So, in Bardu deliverances, don't kill those animals. And the butterflies was when Sunny's dad died in Indonesia. There was a butterfly that perched on Sunny's shoulder that could not be chased away, no matter how. That was Sunny's dead. And then she took a little bit of his ash and brought it back as a memoir. And little did they know that Sunny's dad followed them coming back to America and 
living at their house and every night would came out would come out and sleep in between Fo Chi and Sunny. And Fo Chi woke up and saw the dad sleeping in between and flew. <laughs> and Fo Chi chanted Om Guru Lin Sung Siti Hom Sit and Sunny's dad uh, retreated a step. So he appeared frequently. So they asked me to go to their house and sprinkle the holy water and to lock him up inside the Sarira tower. And ever since, he never come out again. He never came out again. Otherwise, he uh, created commotion for almost a month then. These were all real experiences, so that people would know. And when they look for their loved ones, and he often appeared, he loved his, his daughter most, so came with his daughter to America, he needed no visa and could come from Indonesia here. And he showed himself to them. And then they asked me to uh, capture him, to collect him. So, you need to visualize the visualization of attainment in seven days, the swiftest way to be reborn. You need to be able to do it as a tantric practitioner. At the verge of dying, intermediate state, and the moment of reincarnation, you need to know or at least you need to know to chant this. We need to know to chant Amitabha Buddha in the least. If you can single-mindedly chant the Buddha's name, Amitabha, then Amitabha and the Pure Land Trinity will appear and guide you to the Pure Land and Buddha Land. That's the simplest and the most convenient way in Buddhism. You should at least know to chant Amitabha Buddha or to chant the mantra. I'm teaching you to always chant the mantra frequently so that the mantra is always on your brain, in your brain, so that on the verge of dying, you can also chant mantra. That's called the radiant chanting. So by chanting, you would have the clear light radiance. So you chant the mantra until, as soon as you chant the mantra, you would generate clear light radiance. So that on the verge of dying, during the intermediate state, at the moment of reincarnation, you would have no problem whatsoever. Because you would have the clear light radiance guiding you. That's called the attainment through radiant or clear light radiance chanting. And that's also called guiding the consciousness. You guide the consciousness into the realm of clear light radiance to the pure, pure land and Buddha land, to the heart mind of the Yida. That's the answer to Lianhua Menghua in Taiwan.
in the lease, we should be able to do that. There's a very beautiful, I mean, a lady that dress up really well, a mature woman. At the hospital, the doctor asked her, how old are you? And she said, hmm, already 20. And the doctor noted memory loss. Because she's already matured, and yet she said she was 20. Three slowest animals. One is the snail. <laughs> Any both pronunciations will work. The second. It's a turtle. They move very slowly. And the third is when women putting on cosmetics. Mm. Yeah, that is true. It's tick they're very slow when they put on the cup. Now we'll talk about the Vimalakirti Sutra. Sakyamuni Buddha said, accumulated treasures, sentient beings are a kind of Bodhisattva Buddha land. How is that? Bodhisattvas manifest as sentient beings to get to the Buddha land. They get to the Buddha land by taming sentient beings. They let all sentient beings know which country to enter the Buddha's wisdom and get to the Buddha land. They let all sentient beings know which country to generate the Bodhisattva root and get to the Buddha land. How is that? Bodhisattvas attain the pure land by having mercy and benefiting all sentient beings. This is what Sakyamuni Buddha said. This makes me think of a song. Let me sing it for you. You should be very familiar with it and you can sing it too.
second on the Buddha side. Accumulated treasures. Mm. Sentient beings are kind of Bodhisattva Buddha land. Let me tell you what is a sentient being and what is a Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva is a sentient being that's been awakened. This, this one statement, listen carefully. A Bodhisattva is an awakened sentient being. And what is a sentient being? A sentient being is a bodhisattva that is still under delusion, that's not awakened yet. Have you listened carefully? Have you understood? So bodhisattvas are sentient beings. And sentient beings are also bodhisattvas. They are equal. Bodhisattvas are sentient beings, and sentient beings are bodhisattvas. Just because bodhisattvas have attained Buddha Dharma and have practiced Buddha Dharma, therefore they are bodhisattvas. But they originally come from sentient beings. And sentient beings, because they have attachments to everything, wealth, beauty, fame, and always tumbling endlessly without Buddha Dharma, without spiritual cultivation. But they're still deluded bodhisattvas. Yet they are still bodhisattvas who are in delusion. So this first statement, sentient beings are a kind of bodhisattva Buddha land. There is no division or difference between bodhisattvas and sentient beings. Bodhisattvas are the awakened ones the ones that's cultivating, and sentient beings are the one that's deluded, the one that's unawakened yet. But when a sentient being has been awakened, they become a bodhisattva. And when a bodhisattva in delusion, that's a sentient being. So. In this statement, sentient beings are a kind of bodhisattva Buddha land. Most people would not know how to explain that. But can master explain it for you? So the old MacDonald raised a chicken, then he would crow like chicken. And he raised ducks, so he would quack like a duck. And he raised sheep and would mm, mm, like a sheep. <laughs> so that that's what it means. They are relative. So we are also bodhisattvas. Because once you're awakened, of course you're a bodhisattva. You have generated bodhicitta. So you're bodhisattvas who initially generate bodhicitta. Very simple. You are a bodhisattva because you have generated the mind of aspiration and you have taken refuge, you have decided to walk the bodhisattva path. So you are the bodhisattva who has generated bodhicitta. But if you're not awakened, and you're still attached to this and attached to that, then you're just a thing, because you're still attached. 
So you need to break the attachment to self and attachment to everything. Sentient beings have afflictions because they still have this notion of self. Because without self, what are you afflicted about? Because in Buddha Dharma, that's why in Buddha Dharma, no self is when you benefit yourself and you benefit others, other sentient beings. Why? How is that? Bodhisattvas manifest as sentient beings to get to the Buddha realm. When Bodhisattvas benefit others, then they would uh, get the pure land. When Bodhisattvas deliver sentient beings, then they have gotten the Buddha land or the pure land. Because if the sentient beings follow the bodhisattvas, then they are the pure ones. They have purified themselves. Simply said, a pure bodhisattva in their deliverance of sentient beings, and the sentient beings are purified, that means they have got the pure land. That's the statement. They tame sentient beings to get the Buddha land. Why do they need to be tamed? Because sentient beings are deluded amid the wealth, beauty, fame, sleep, and food. So they need to tame and sentient beings according to the spiritual roots of different sentient beings. Everyone sometimes would have desire or greed. And because we still have desire, we are sentient beings. If people have a strong feeling of greed, you help them so that they are not greedy anymore. That's called taming. If someone has a strong uh, mind for sensual pleasures, then you use some methods to, to adjust it so that they don't have such a strong desire anymore. So taming is a way, is a method. Transforming is another method. They let all sentient beings know which country to enter the Buddha wisdom and get the Buddha land. They also observe the spiritual roots of the sentient beings to know which pure land to go to and use which method to tame them. If they belong to the kind of the pure land set, they use that method. If they belong to the tantric Buddhism, you use those methods. If a person uh, belongs to the Dharma Laksana or Yogacara school, then you use Yogacara methods to deliver them. If they like Yogacara, you use Yogacara methods to transform and deliver them. If a person like Mahadhyamaka, then you use the Tiantai school methods to deliver them. If a person likes precepts, then you use Vinaya school methods. 
if someone likes Zen or meditation, then you use Zen Buddhist methods to transform them. Many methods. So that's why in Mahayana Buddhism there are eight schools the flower ornament or Atavamsaka, Zen, Pure Land, Vinaya, Tantric Buddhism, Yogacara, Tian Tai, and Avatamsaka. And one more, the three treaties school, Madhyamaka, hundred treaties and twelve door treaties. So you deliver them accordingly. They let sentient beings know which country to generate the Bodhisattva root and get the Buddha land. So, what do they belong to? You use their roots, you use their causes and conditions. As I just said, the Saha world is causes and conditions. So when we transform and deliver sentient beings, we don't use the same method. We use many different kinds of methods to deliver sentient beings. Now we use the tantric Buddhist methods to deliver sentient beings, but we are not limited to tantric Buddhism. We also know many other methods, and bodhisattvas are as such. I like that. So, what is bodhisattvas attain the pure land by having mercy and benefiting all sentient beings? So, bodhisattvas are benefiting themselves and benefiting all other sentient beings. So everything is to because to help sentient beings. Why? Because bodhisattvas attain the pure land. How come the bodhisattvas attain the pure land? Because of the pure spiritual cultivation and their deliverance of sentient beings. And every bodhisattva is different in their deliverance of sentient beings. So according to Buddhism, there are many Buddha lands. And one more thing. Actually, the Saha world is also a pure land. This is a very crucial key point here. That the Saha world is also a pure land. Don't mistake it. Are you sure? Because the Saha world is the evil world of five turbidities, five contaminants, contaminants of uh, afflictions, of uh, destinies of sentient beings, and hmm, I miss a few of our perceptions, like what you see, like on the televisions, then it would contaminate your sights. That's contaminants by sights. Recently, someone bought me a cell phone, that my sister Hanifa, but I did not know how to use it. I all 
always turn it off. I only turn it on when I make a call. And there's an icon of a phone, and I would tap on it. Then I can make a phone call. But I never accept any calls. I can call out, but I never accept any calls. It's a good phone. It's Apple and 5G. Haniva bought it, and of course it's expensive. <laughs> but I don't know how to use it. And a cell phone will contaminate your sights. And I heard some people are addicted to cell phones really badly and they shut themselves off, isolate themselves, and um, using cell phones uh, can be a problematic, so I might as well not learn it. Uh, what can I do if I'm uh, attached to it? When we watch the television, Things that they show and what you see can contaminate you and you can become afflicted by it. Or the beauty shown would make you have uh, 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 random thoughts or improper thoughts. Oh. So what you see uh, can be a contaminant, like the televisions, cell phones, what you see on the streets. Oh, wherever you are, they would uh, contaminate your sights and your eyes, and it would give you afflictions, and that's called contaminants by sight. Second is contaminant by afflictions, and because you saw it, you become afflicted. For example, uh, I cannot use myself as an analogy. Uh, when a man goes home, usually he's always on time, going to work and coming home. But one day the boss said, you can go home soon, sooner than usual. And he got home and saw something unusual. And he heard something that he wasn't supposed to, and saw something he wasn't supposed to. And then he got afflicted. So contaminants through sight and contaminants, contamination due to afflictions. And all sentient beings have the same problem. So that's contamination of the sentient beings. You get home, and the house is all locked up, and you wanted to surprise your wife, and got in from the back door, and you saw something you weren't supposed to see, and you become very afflicted by it. That's contamination due to afflictions. It might as well, it might be better not to go at home, because if you don't see it, then uh, you're not affected or you're pure. Sentient beings are all like that. 
Is there a person that would stay totally calm and unaffected after seeing those? Is there nobody? No, impossible. Right? You would definitely be afflicted by it. You saw your boyfriend and very intimate with another woman. You would have that contamination by sight and by afflictions, and sentient beings are all the same. Your boyfriend is together with your best female friend. How would you feel? So, contaminants. And the next one is contaminants by fate. So, you contaminate yourself. That originally it was a pure Buddha nature. And then because of this, the whole world is the same. So in this world, there are many injustices and unfairness that you see. This is not a joke. Uh, Ukraine is at war with Russia. In my mind, it's as if many people beat one person. Think about it. Many people. It's like a group of people beat one person. Although that one person started, Russia started to beat Ukraine. But all the Western bloc ganged up and beat Russia together. So at first, one person started the punch, and then the group ganged up and retaliated against that one person. Not, pe not many people help Russia. The Western countries, European countries, all ganged up to beat Russia and to uh, to beat them up. If you see this on the street, and if I have Kung Fu, I would fight for justice and help out. Because I have Kung Fu, then I would beat the whole gang and beat them up and help that person. But that person was the person who started it. So look at the world. The situation, wouldn't the situation contaminate your eyes, your brain, and you would think a lot, and everybody thinks differently. I would think that this person started this weak person so that he was crying out, and then the group of people ganged up and together beat them back, beat that person back. In sum, Buddhist practitioners should know never to fight, never to beat people, never to scold others. People should help each other. Countries should help each other, but not to get into wars or conflicts. Buddhists should not get into conflicts. We should help each other, and so should countries. Buddhists should have good thoughts, 
good hearts. So that's why the world is called the evil world with five contaminants, because they uh, don't understand, they cannot see through, they cannot. Uh, that's why they're deluded. And bodhisattvas are liberated, they have wisdom, and they have wisdom and they can get purity. That's what it means, and there are many methods. Bodhisattvas manifest or transform sentient beings to get to the Buddha land. They tame sentient beings to get the Buddha land. No, they let sentient beings know how to enter Buddha wisdom and get the Buddha land. They let sentient beings know how to generate the Bodhisattva root and get the Buddha lands. And Bodhisattvas attain the pure land by having mercy and benefit sentient beings. That's the meaning of this passage. Do you understand? Although the sentient beings are contaminated, the world is contaminated, actually it is also a pure land. I want to especially emphasize that when your mind is pure, everything is pure. We saw the war between Ukraine and Russia. Because they don't understand. They have they are not sensible. That's why. We see two people are fighting and uh, scolding each other. That's no good. Fighting is no good. Arguing is no good. Uh, conflict, getting into war, no good. None of those are good. We can, we should not do those. At such a time the world would become pure lands, then the Saha world is a pure land. When you see anything bad, you get wisdom from it. Then you would know what is good, what is bad. Because good and bad are a kind of causes and conditions. What the Bodhisattva should have or should not have. Actually, a bodhisattva should not get or let go, but amid sentient beings, they should, they do get and not get. Like we don't get into wars, get into fightings, or get into arguments or conflicts. So in the Saha world, bodhisattvas get or let go. What is good that should be gotten, or what is bad that we should let go? That's the choices of bodhisattvas in the Saha world. And it's all for the sake to help sentient beings. All for the sake to help sentient beings. Sometimes sentient beings are quite pitiful. Look at the people, the common people of Ukraine. Very pitiful. Those people are really pitiful. And the key is because they have different idealism. But they can negotiate, they can talk about it. And you don't help mediate them. Instead, you help them get into fight. So should you do that 
As bodhisattvas, you should know what you should get into and what you should not get into. This is what I'm talking about here today. That we don't care about what's going on out there, about those countries getting into wars and nine of our business. But now America spent lots of money to help Ukraine and sent lots of... But the money the country spent is all our tax money. I paid lots of taxes. So my mindset is different than people in the world. Different, don't you think so? Different, right? What do you think? In my opinion, someone strong hit someone weak, and when other people saw that, everybody helped that one to get into fight. But in my opinion, that's all wrong. What should we use? We should... Uh, uh, we should help mediate and resolve the fights and to get them into negotiation and to discuss and negotiate calmly and strive for peace. Otherwise, look, so many people died in Russia, in Ukraine. You know, Ukraine now have 8 million refugees. And Russia, who beat the other country, also have many people died. And the Chinese have a saying, when you kill 10,000 people, other people, you yourself actually lost 3,000 people. So that's why it's a loss-loss situation for both. It's not a good thing. So now, Listen carefully to this word, to this passage. Sakyamuni Buddha said, accumulated treasures, sentient beings are a kind of a Bodhisattva Buddha land. Most people don't understand. Uh, deluded Bodhisattvas are sentient beings. And bodhisattvas are the ones who have attained, who have been awakened and have pure uh, mind. So the bodhisattvas are the awakened ones and sentient beings are the deluded ones. The sentient beings are deluded bodhisattvas. And bodhisattvas are deluded sentient beings. Most people would not understand. So I explain it today so you understand. So the sentient beings that Bodhisattvas delivered are also Buddha. The sentient beings that have been tamed by bodhisattvas are also Buddha lands. That the methods that bodhisattvas use to deliver sentient beings are for the sake of benefiting sentient beings. Now, do you understand this Vimalakiti Sutra?
this is a joke only for Chinese. This is also a joke only for Chinese. In the past, Grandmaster was also a Christian, and Grandmaster believed that Jesus is my guru because in the Bible there were many statements that are related to the Buddhist sutras. Other people have not studied into it. The greatest miracle of Jesus was that he was resurrected after three days, three days after his death. He performed this miracle. He was resurrected three days after his death. That's why I referred to Jesus as a Prateka Buddha, a different kind of Buddhas. That's why we also enshrine Jesus here. Right over there, we have a statue of Jesus. We don't uh, differentiate different religions because they also have a uh, functions or abilities to transform and deliver sentient beings. And Jesus Christ, as I often mention, is really great. He's spoken a lot of Buddha Dharma. He also had the spirit of no self. I often said, don't let the left hand know what the good deeds the right hand did. And don't keep the merit in your heart or mind. That's also mentioned in the Buddhist Sutras, the spirit of no self. You cannot have self. The Buddhist Sutras often talk about this. And because you have no self, you can deliver sentient beings. Only then that would be a true merit. Jesus said, you need to do good deeds, but you don't keep them in your mind because you don't let the left hand know what the right hand did. Only then that's a true good deed. So the Bible had many statements Jesus said that are in compliance with the Buddhist sutras. In the future, I can write a book about the comparisons or the relationships between the Bible and the Buddhist Sutras. It can alleviate uh, many Christians who discriminate against Buddhism or Buddhism uh, and not accepting Christianity or Judaism, etc. Actually, 
they're all equal. That's all for today. Omani Bemi Home.